In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a cultivation schedule in Asana. I'll show you step by step how to build out a production plan across two locations with multiple crops. We'll make custom dashboards, charts that track each crop. I'll show you how to create all the tasks needed to set up the cultivation schedule from start to finish with self-populating dates based off either a start date or end date. We can track every crop's progress throughout the year in a timeline view and everything updates in real time. Know what crops being put into flower, harvested, and dried next. See how each room is performing and if any crops are behind schedule. Know what is going on in your company in an easy to follow overview. Understand what's happening in each room at every location from mother stock to flowering through drying, testing, trimming, and finally, what's ready to sell. If you're already using Asana, then this will be easy to implement. If you're new to Asana, it's free to try for 30 days. So why not see if it can help you be more productive? All you have to do is download the free business trial and set up a new company. There's plenty of tutorials online to show you how to set up Asana and get started. Once you're set up and ready to go, we can jump in and start building out our cultivation schedule. Okay, to get started, let's open up Asana and go to the home page. Start by adding a team. We're gonna name this overview. SMP is for sample. And we're gonna create a new project. Click on blank project. We're gonna name this sample timeline and then click continue and now go to project. Let's start by adding our section. You can do this in either the board view or the list. These are gonna represent different rooms or locations at your facilities. For example, mother rooms or clone rooms, vegetative propagation houses, etc. I prefer to do this in the list view. I find it easier to add the sections and it gives me a better overview of what I'm doing. You can add a new section by pressing the add section button or a quick shortcut is tab plus the N key adds a new section easily from the keyboard. If you have processes that occur after harvest, you can also add those in so you can keep track of all your tasks that happen throughout the crop all the way through sale. Now that we have our overview sections added, we can go ahead and add our custom fields to do that. Click on the little plus button in the top right hand corner. From here, we can decide what type of custom field we want to add. I'm going to select single select, type in a name. We're going to call this one locations. And in the options area, we're going to go ahead and type in location one and then location two. This is going to represent our different locations and we can track these in our custom fields. So these can represent different greenhouses, different pieces of properties, or different pieces of land that you're growing your crop on. Okay, now you wanna make sure you add it to your library. This will allow you to reuse this custom field in multiple projects without having to retype it. Go ahead and create the field. Cool, we're done. Let's do another one. For this one, we're gonna do a single select as well. And we're gonna call this one crop numbers. You're gonna to wanna to know your crop numbers before you start this process. I'll typically go in and add the crop numbers for the entire year so they're all there. For this tutorial, we're just going to add four crop numbers, two for each location. I create my crop numbers to show what crop it is in a specific year and the overall crop it is in a duration of the company. Make sure to add it to your field library and then go ahead and create the custom field. Let's go ahead and create another one and we'll do a multi-select. This one is going to be our species so we can track what we're growing. Some growers may want to put the genus in here instead of species and that's fine. Remember, we're just creating an overall grouping of the plants, not the specific plant itself. Add as many classifications as you want to help you identify the different types of plants that you'll be growing. Once we've added all of our fields in, we'll make sure to add it to our custom field library and go ahead and create this field. And now we'll move on to our next field. I want to point out something when you go ahead and select a field, if you've accidentally selected the wrong one, there's a little option pull down menu called field type. You can always change it within here if you need to. Okay, we're going to name this one cultivars. This is going to be the specific plant itself. You can list by common name, genus and species, whichever you're comfortable with. 
This is a way to identify the plant growing in the crop. Normally I would add whatever crops I would be growing over the course of a year. But for this example, we're just gonna go ahead and add four different ones, add them to our custom field library so we don't have to retype them again. And then we're gonna go ahead and create this custom field. One more to go, let's go ahead and select the number field. Go ahead and type in amount, or you could break this down by trays, pots, etc. I just use amount for this example. Make sure to add it to the custom library and create the field. In our overview team, we want to create projects so they're the same as the ones here in our timeline. To do this, we'll hit the plus button next to the overview team. From the drop down menu, we can go ahead and select blank project. From here, we can give our new project a name. We're going to name this one Mother Rooms, the same as the one in the list. Hit continue and go to project. From here, we're going to add the different locations that we have mother rooms or propagation houses, etc. For this tutorial, I only have two locations, so I'm going to go ahead and add both locations in the section menu. Once we're done adding our locations, we're going to go ahead and add custom fields to this project. Since we already created them, we can choose from our library. Here you can see all the custom fields that we created earlier. Go ahead and select one from the list and it'll put it into the project. Hit the plus button, choose from library, and we'll repeat this until we have all of our custom fields entered into our project. As you can see, doing it this way does not take very long. If you had to rewrite all those custom fields and create new ones, that would be a big pain in the butt. Now that you have all your fields in, you can go ahead and adjust them. The next step is to create a new project. But instead of creating it from scratch, we're going to go ahead and duplicate the mother room project. Click the three little dots to bring up the drop down menu and select duplicate project. That'll bring up the duplicate project menu. In here, you can make adjustments to the project as needed and rename it. We're going to go ahead and rename this one to clone rooms. Once we've gotten it renamed, we're going to go ahead and hit the create project button. This will create the new project with the criteria we just set and the new name. Once it has created that project, we're going to go ahead and duplicate the clone room project and rename that one as well. This one we will rename veg rooms. And just as a reminder, these projects are the same as the list you created in the timeline. The names will match and be the same. Click the three dots to bring up the drop down menu. Click duplicate project and we're going to rename this project flower rooms. Once you finish typing that in, we're going to go ahead and create the new project by clicking the create new project button. And then we're going to go ahead and duplicate the flower room. We only have a few more to go. We're going to go ahead and rename this one dry rooms and then go ahead and create new project. By creating a project for each room, it enables us to track exactly what's going on at each location for the specific room. And I'll show you later in the tutorial why this is important. Once we've finished creating the testing room and we've hit create new project, we're gonna make an adjustment in this room. What we're gonna do is click on testing we need to adjust these so that it doesn't say location. Go to board view and rename these sections. We're gonna create a bit of a Kanban view of these tasks as they progress through testing. So we'll start with needs testing, then click onto the next section to rename it. And we're gonna go ahead and rename this one in progress. Once you finish that, move on and click on the next section. And we're gonna rename this one past COA. One more to go, and hopefully we don't have any fall into this category. We're gonna rename this section failed COA. Next, we wanna go ahead and duplicate this project. So to do that, click the three little dots to bring up the drop down menu, click duplicate project, and we're gonna go ahead and rename this one. We'll rename this one trim rooms so that we can track the progress after testing in our trimming. If your state does trimming before testing, then just move the order of these processes. Next, we need to rename the sections in our trim room. To do this, go into the trim room, bring up the board view, 
for trimming and testing, I do prefer the board view. I think it gives a nice overview. Go ahead and delete the last section. We don't need that one. Click the three little dots and at the bottom of the drop down menu, hit delete section. Then we're going to go ahead and rename these sections. Your company may have different names for these processes and just go ahead and enter them as needed. For this tutorial, I'm just going to create three simple titles. The first one we'll name to do. The second one we'll name in progress and the third one we'll rename done. Next, we want to add a rule to this section. Click the three dots and then click add rule to section. We need to choose an action, which will be completion status. This means when a task is moved to that section, it will automatically complete that task. You know the rule's been applied by the little lightning bolt symbol next to the name. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this project. We're gonna rename this one ready for sale. This will be the final project that we create for the overview team. The sections in this team will be the same as the ones in the trim room. So we don't need to make any changes there. After we renamed it, click create new project. From here, we're gonna go ahead and create a new team. To do that, click the plus button next to add team. <clears throat> From here, we can create a new name for this team. We're gonna rename this one location one. You can name this greenhouse one, or if you have specific names for your greenhouses or locations, you can put those names in here. We're gonna go ahead and repeat the process for the second location and create the new team. Next, we're gonna make our crop template. We'll start by creating a new project in location one. Open up your projects, click on new project and then blank project. Go ahead and type in the name of your template. I like to end mine with the name template. You can adjust the location, privacy. Go ahead and click continue, then go to project. This template will set all the tasks and dates for the entire crop. The first thing we're gonna do is add sections. These are gonna represent your rooms, greenhouses, bays, things of that nature. For this tutorial, we're gonna go ahead and match these sections with the ones we made in our overview. But instead of an overview of all of the rooms, this is going to be the specific room at the specific location. And we're gonna make this in a template. So every time we wanna populate a crop in a location, all we have to do is fire up this template, enter in the start date, and it'll populate everything else for us. I'm gonna put in two flower rooms at this location and then two flower rooms at the other location. This is where you would enter in all your different flower rooms, all your different veg rooms, dry rooms, whatever room you wanna track a task that's gonna happen in that room, this is where you would enter it. You can actually name these anything you want. We'll link these rooms with the ones in the overview in just a little bit. Okay, now that we have all of our sections entered, we need to add our tasks. To do that, click the little plus button next to the section. It'll say add task to this section. When I name my tasks, I give them the same format as the crop number. This way we can track it in many different places throughout Asana. First thing we wanna do is assign this task to a project. We can assign this specific task to multiple projects. This is how we do it under the project pull down menu. We wanna tie this task to our timeline view. So we'll click on timeline. And then under timeline, we wanna make sure that it's tied to the mother room section in the timeline view. So we can go ahead and hit the plus button That'll add this task to another project. And we're gonna go ahead and select the mother room project that we made in our overview team. Go ahead and click that. And for this one, we wanna change the section from untitled to location one, because this task is gonna happen in location one. You could also leave this as untitled and change this once you've populated the project. Now let's go ahead and add our subtasks that will happen with the main task of taking cuttings. Enter in as many associated tasks that have to happen with the main task here. To enter in a new task, just press enter. It'll take you to the next add task. 
We won't fill the dates in here. We will do that at a different time. When you're finished, we'll go ahead and close the task menu. And now we can assign our custom fields. So to do that, hit the little plus button. Choose from library. And go ahead and click the fields that we entered in earlier. We'll only have to do this one more time in this task template, because every time we create a new crop, this will already be done for us in the template. It's also fairly quick since we've already created them and all we have to do is choose from the library. Okay, now that we have our final one, the amount, we can adjust where they are. We want the size of them, etc. You can also see all of our custom fields are in there. If you want to move them around, all you have to do is click on it. The little hand signal will come up and then you can drag it to the new location you want to move it to. So let's put the locations there. You can also add to these. So let's say you made a mistake or you want to add something, click on the edit button. And in here you can add any more that you want. You can delete it, anything that you need to add to this field. And you can hit save changes and you're all done. Okay, let's add our next task to clone room. We'll make sure we give it the same beginning name and then root cuttings. Because we're gonna root our cuttings in the clone room, separate from taking. So let's assign this clone room to the timeline overview project and make sure it's in the clone room section. Open the drop down menu and click clone room. Let's add it to another project. Hit the plus button. We want to scroll down and look for clone rooms in our overview team. We're going to go ahead and add that by clicking on it. And let's go ahead and adjust the section. We're going to make this one location one. Again, you could leave this blank undefined and then change it later. I'm just doing it like this for this tutorial. Let's go ahead and add our subtasks. Same process as before. We want to go ahead and type in all the subtasks that are associated with the main task. Don't enter in the dates. Let's just enter in all the tasks. Your task can span over multiple days, like taking care of clones, specific feed programs, specific fertilizer programs, IPM programs, whatever you need to enter, you can track that task. We'll enter in the dates later. Okay, now let's close the task menu. Now you can see next to the main task, there's a number with a symbol. That represents the subtasks that we've created for this main task. If you click on that, it'll bring you back down to the subtasks immediately. And then you can click on the next one and it brings you right to your subtasks. It's a quick, easy way to be able to go down all your tasks and subtasks without opening multiple menus. Okay, let's create a task in Vegroom and name it the same as the other ones. This will be veg plants. Let's go ahead and open the task menu and assign this task to the multiple projects it needs to be assigned to. So you guessed it, we're gonna scroll down, add it to the overview team, adjust the section, the pull down menu. Let's go ahead and add it to another project. We're gonna add it to the veg room team. Let's find it, there it is. Perfect. Adjust the section if you need to. Great. Now let's add our subtasks. You can be as detailed as you would like when adding into your subtasks. This is really useful for your employees so they know exactly what to do and when to do it. Then everyone can see what tasks have been completed. You can then comment if you need to on the task. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward as I create the rest of these tasks. We'll follow the same process by adding a task, changing the name, changing what projects it's associated with, then adding in the subtasks until we've created all the tasks. Cool. Now that we've created all of our tasks, 
we can go into each project and see the associated tasks that we assign to that project. As I click through the projects and the overview team, you can see that all the tasks that we assign are sitting in there. This will let us know at each location what tasks are being accomplished. The next thing we need to do is change the colors because they're all set to blue. You want to have a different color for each of your projects and each team that you have for easy identification. Now that we have all of our colors set, we're gonna turn this project into a template. To do that, go up to the project name and click the menu arrow. Then we wanna click on save as template. Once you've clicked on that, it brings up the new template menu. From there, you can name it, assign it to a specific team, and set the privacy on who can access this template. We're gonna set this one to location one. Privacy is set how we need it. Let's go ahead and create the template. Now that the template has been created, we can add in our dates. To do this, click on the due date with the task that you want to adjust. Click add a start date. This lets us set a date range. We'll set it to start one day after the project starts and be due two days after the project starts. You can see we're not setting specific days. We're setting this task to start at a date range specified after the project starts. You can adjust the schedule type for all the tasks in this template, depending on the type of project that you're creating. You can also set it to skip weekends when it's creating these due dates. I don't want it to skip the weekends. I want it to create tasks across the board. Once we're done, we're going to go ahead and update all tasks, and that'll adjust all the tasks in this entire template for us. We don't have to go into that menu again. Next, click on a task so we can adjust the dates of the subtasks. For each subtask, click the due date icon, and this will allow us to enter in the due dates that we want for this specific task. We're gonna set this to zero. That means it'll be due the day that the project starts. We'll set the next two to be due one and then two days after the project starts. Now we can go ahead and click the done button and move on to our next task. Next, we're gonna click on root cuttings and add in our days for our subtasks. Click the due date icon and then click on add start date. We're gonna add a date range. We want this task to start three days after the project starts and be due five days after the project starts. Let's move on to the next one. Click on the icon, then click add due date. This one will make six to 12 days after the project starts. Let's do this one more time. And we'll make this one 13 to 17 days after the project starts. This will let the employees know to do specific clone care on specific days. Go ahead and click done. I'm going to fast forward as I enter in the rest of these dates. Now that we have all the dates entered in, we can go ahead and hit the continue button to move on to the next stage. This is where we can make some changes to the template settings. We have a name. Let's go ahead and add a quick description. So when someone opens this template, they know what they're getting themselves into. The more templates you create, the more descriptive you want to be in your description. For now, we'll just keep this one simple. You can also adjust the team that this template will be associated with and who can edit it. We'll leave ours on location one. Everything else looks good. And if you just want to save this template without finishing it, you can go up here and hit the done button. But we're going to go ahead and finish this template. So let's click on the finish button. That'll bring us to our team menu where we can see all of our projects and templates. And here's the template that we just created. Next, we need to delete the project that we used to create the template. To do that, click on the project to open the project and click on the drop down menu arrow. Scroll down to delete project. 
click delete project. This is going to delete the project and all associated tasks with that project. But we associated that project with another team. So it won't delete the tasks in another team. We'll have to do that manually. I'll show you how two different ways. Go into the overview team and click on timeline. That'll bring up the tasks. When you click on a task, it brings up the task menu. From there, click the three little dots in the top right corner and scroll down to delete task. That will delete this task. There's a quicker way to do this. If you click on the task, hold down the control key, and then click on the other tasks you would like to select, it will highlight them all. You can see them in blue. At the bottom of the screen, there's a gray menu. From there, we can delete all of these tasks at once. Click on the little trash can icon, and they're gone. Now, when we click on the rest of the projects in the overview team, we can see that all of those tasks have been deleted as well. Now let's add some crops to our locations. To do this, click on our location and there's our template. We're gonna go ahead and click on that template. That'll bring up the template menu for us. Click use template. From here, we can name the template what we want. This is where you'll put in your specific crop number that match with the ones we entered into our custom fields. Go ahead and enter in your name. Make sure your team and privacy settings are set. And then this is really important. Click on choose your start date for the project. This is where we can adjust all the dates. They'll populate from this date that we set here. Pick your start date and then click create project. Once the project opens, you can see that all of the dates have been populated for us. All of the subtask dates are populated. All of the main task dates have been populated for us throughout the course of the entire crop from start to finish. And all we had to do is enter in one start date and the program did the rest for us. Using this method, you can quickly populate your crops for the entire year and have all of the tasks associated with them with their corresponding dates. Let's check our overview team and see what happened in there. It should have populated all of our tasks for us except the names still have the 000 from our template. And make sure each task has the same name as the crop. Click on the crop project. And from here, the very top of the menu, go ahead and highlight the name of the crop. We're gonna paste this in to our task names. Highlight it, press Control C, then highlight the section you wanna delete and press Control V to paste. Continue to highlight, press Control V, Highlight, press Control V, highlight, press Control V. This will continue to paste what you've copied into the highlighted section and we're done. Now all the names have changed. If we go back into our overview team, you can see that all the names have changed in there as well. Okay, everything looks good. Now we need to add the rest of our crops to their locations. To do this, we'll follow the same steps as before. Click on the location one team and then click on the template to bring up the template menu screen. And from there, go ahead and click use template. And we're gonna repeat the same process as before, giving it a new name, making sure the team and privacy settings are set. And then the most important, make sure you choose a start date for the project. So go ahead and click on choose a start date and enter in the date that you need to start this project at. I'm gonna start this one one week later than the one we started before. And as you can see, these tasks will be scheduled between specific date range. Go ahead and create the project and Asana will populate the project and all of the dates for us. Everything is in there just as before. When we click on our subtasks, all of the dates are populated starting from the start date that we selected. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward as I enter in the projects for location two. Okay, now that all of our projects are done and all the dates are set, you can check and make sure that everything is in the overview team. Locations are separated by location, how we need them, perfect. Now I wanna show you how to organize your tasks. When we go into our flower rooms, we can see under location two, harvest and flower are out of order. You can manually move them, but that would take too long. The easiest way is to go to the top and sort by due date. You can sort by whatever criteria makes the most sense. 
but due date will put them in the order we need them in. The next thing we can do is go and fill in our custom fields. To do that, click on one of your crop projects, click the custom field on the task you want to edit, which will bring down the drop down menu. And from there, you can select what you want. You can do this manually for each task, or like we did before, hold the control key while selecting the rest of the tasks. Then when you change the custom field, it will change it for all of the tasks that you selected. This will make adding custom fields really quick and easy. So all you have to do is click on a field that brings up the drop down menu, and then you can select what item you would like in that custom field. And it'll populate for all the items you have selected. You can click on any task to bring up the menu, select an item, and it'll change them for all of the tasks that are selected. Next, we'll enter amounts. So unselect by clicking on an open area and then enter an amount. We'll go with 500 just to make it simple. These amounts can be entered in two different ways. One, as a projection tool to project how many plants you would have in each different phase of the crop's growth at a given time. Or they can be entered in as actuals as the plants move through the crop from start to finish. To make it look a little bit better, we need to adjust the size of some of these fields. All you have to do is grab the edge, it'll highlight blue, move it over a little bit in the right direction, and adjust the size and position of the fields as needed to your liking. That looks good. And when we click on our overview team, we can see all those custom fields were populated in for us. Next, let's move on to our timeline view. Click on the timeline tab in the timeline project. That brings us into our timeline view. From here, adjust the sort menu to start date. Then adjust the view from weeks to quarters. Click on weeks, brings up the menu, click on quarters. That looks much better. That gives us a better overview of our crops. Let's make sure all tasks are selected. That gives us a complete overview. And then we want to save this view as the default. Click the three little dots at the top and click save layout as default. Perfect. Now, when we scroll through the timeline, we can see the crop by start date and broken down by quarters. By hovering your mouse over the task, it will give you all the information you need as you quickly scroll through the timeline view. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward as I do the same thing for the rest of the projects in our overview team. Now that everything's set up like we want it, let's go ahead and set up the dashboard. We're gonna make a dashboard that looks like this. To do this, go to the top left corner of the Asana program and click on the reporting tab. That opens up the reporting screen. From there, click add dashboard. This allows us to pick the type of charts we wanna to add to our dashboard. We're gonna click on add custom chart. First, let's make this a donut style instead of a column style chart. Click on the style menu and select donut. Then we need to select what it reports on. Click on include tasks from specific projects. Scroll down until you find the flower rooms project in the overview team and select that. Then go ahead and click on the drop down menu for group. We want to change this from project to custom field. And under custom field, we want to select crop numbers. Then click on the measure drop down menu and change task count to custom field. And under custom field, select amount. You can change the name. We'll rename this sum of flowering plants by crop. This gives us the overall sum of flowering plants 
divided by individual crop. When you're finished, click the create button and that will create this chart for us. It will automatically put the chart into our dashboard. All right, that looks good. Let's go ahead and create another one. Click on add chart, then go add custom chart. And we're gonna change the chart type to a donut chart and include tasks from specific projects. Then you can type in the name of the project you want. This is the veg room. We're gonna change the group to custom fields cultivars. And then we want to change how it measures from task count to custom field and then amount. Nice. Okay, let's rename this cultivars and veg rooms. This will show us what cultivars we have growing in our veg rooms by amount. Go ahead and click create. Now we got our second chart. Looks good. Let's do one more. Click on add chart and then add custom chart. We'll leave the style alone on this one and just change how it reports. So it's a specific project again. This is flower rooms. We're gonna change it to custom field cultivars. And then the Y axis, we're gonna change to amount. Let's go ahead and rename this one cultivars flowering. This shows us the number of flowering plants by cultivar. If you hover your mouse over the line, it'll show you the amount total. And you can move throughout the graph. It'll show you each amount. Okay, let's go ahead and click create and that'll make the chart for us. That's starting to look good. Let's add one more. We'll follow the same processes, add a custom chart, change include tasks from specific projects, type in the name of the project, this is veg rooms again, and we're going to go custom field, crop numbers, and then change to custom field amount. We'll rename this one veg plants by crop number. This shows us the overall number of veg plants by crop number. When you're finished, press the create button to create this chart. That looks good. We now have a fully populated cultivation schedule built into Asana. You can customize it as needed to fit your crop and crop cycles. I hope this will help you be more productive in your scheduling and tracking of your tasks. If you would like help creating a cultivation schedule in Asana or another program, you can schedule an appointment on my website and be on a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me at a time and date of your choosing. Thank you for watching.